The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 23rd, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone and dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in but you've got a question, you can always send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, and you should be, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. A bit of a mixed bag out there. The mix is now coming from the trannies and the Russell, which are trading to the upside. 17 points for the Russell, 13 points for the trannies. Off two for the Dow. Down nine, basically 10 for the S&P. Off 36 for the NASDAQ 100. Gold is off seven bucks. Silver's down 54 cents. Light sweet crude is up 44 pennies. Natural gas off a penny. 30 year treasury printed out 126.18. That's off seven ticks. Leading the charge dollar wise, the upside, we've got Broadcom up about 12 bucks. Albi Marl up about 12 bucks. Madrigal Pharmaceuticals up 11. Moderna up about nine. Renaissance Holdings up about seven. To the downside, it's AutoZone. Whoosh! $135 move, 5% move. IDEX Labs down 21 bucks, 5%. Monolithic Power Systems, 3%, 14 bucks. Asmill Holdings, nearly 2%, 11 bucks and change. Ferrari is down 11 bucks. That's down about 3 and 6 tenths percent. But let's begin with what do we want to begin with? What do we want to begin with? It's a great question. Let's begin with uh, market press. Let's see where we're at. Let's go with the uh, short term first. Let's start with this. Just try to understand market conditions. So this is the S&P 500. Market breadth positive for its 30-minute time frame. 151 instruments above profile, 139 below. So let me do this here. We'll flop back and forth. Let me fire up my 30-minute equity future charts out there. We'll go take, so you got positive market breadth for the S&P. Let's check on the NASDAQ out here, the NQ. The NQ's market breadth is, drum roll Johnny, negative, 23 above, 31 below. So we're just going to take a look at those 30-minute charts as soon as they populate here. I'll go ahead and switch the screens. Just try to get. So we got one bullish, one bearish. Tells us about that choppy market that we've been dealing with for quite some time. We're getting over to those 30-minute time frame charts. So you got a 30-minute bullish set of TAS market profiles with a uh, confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern that is forming as we speak right now. Now, it's only 11.10. we got 20 minutes, so I, I shouldn't be so fast on the uh, draw there. Um, but if we do get this bullish engulfing candle, then price should then take us up to 41.99. If price can clear 41.99, that's the top of its daily pro, uh, top of its 30-minute profile, then we should see a move to 42.19. In the case of the NQ, which does not have a... Um, which does not have a, which has negative market breadth and does not have a bottoming pattern out here. You really can't draw on an A to B equals CD pattern here. And price right now is dealing with resistance at 13,864, we'll call it. If there's a close above 13,864, you should see move to 13,886 and then 13,917 
would follow. Now, the Russell 2000 is strong like bull. It has already taken out a TD nine count breakdown resistance level, 1809 out there. Uh, this looks like it wants to continue to rally higher. The Dow equity future contract for its 30 minute time frame has a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom and price is trading just above the top of that profile. So it does look like 33,450 is in the cards for the Dow, but it's really going to be the NQ that needs to uh, help these other markets move higher out here. I think it's the NQ that is driving things. We can see that it had a nice TD9 count eight at about uh, 10 o'clock last evening, and then it has negated a TD9 count bottom, which typically tells you you've got a strong move lower, which what we've seen is prices moved all the way back to a prior swing point, the one from 7.30 in the morning. That was on uh, yesterday, I believe, was at uh, yeah, yesterday morning, May 22nd. So uh, let's continue taking a look at uh, market breadth. We'll uh, actually just uh, move that over to this screen that we're looking at right now. This will give us a little bit of the larger setup here. And when I talk about the larger setup, I'm referring to a 6240 daily and weekly. So in the case of the S&P 500, which did have past positive market breadth for the 30-minute chart, it's negative across the board. Uh, just by the uh, hair of its chinny chin chin on the four hour, meaning 151 above, 171 below out there. But nonetheless, you have market breadth that's negative across the board Whoops, for the S&P 500. In the case of the NDX 100 out here, we've got market breadth that's bullish with regard to its four hour daily and its weekly and bearish on the 60 minute time frame. So let's take a look at that 60 minute time frame that it's bearish on. See if there's any kind of support that we can identify out here. And the answer is, well, there is. There's a TD9 count bottom that formed. So on the 60-minute uh, time frame charts out here, we have uh, TD9 count bottoms for the ES, the NQ, and the Dow. Now, the cool thing about that is that closing below those lows, those lows, but, well, I take that back. The ES mini negated its TD9 count bottom. Wake up, Steve-O. So no bottom there. What has held is its breakout level of support at 41.91. You do have that TD9 count bottom on the NQ, for its 60 minute time frame, real resistance is at 13,880. If you can close above that, you're looking at 13,952. Again, that Russell looks very strong. TD9 count bottom still on the Dow equity future contract. If price can close above basically where it's trading right now at about 33,352, I think is the number, 351. Uh, if you close above that on the 30 minute bar, you're looking to move to 33,432. So sum it up, Steve O, we got choppy market conditions, period, end of story. We've been in these choppy market conditions. We're in these consolidating patterns. They're likely to continue on here. Uh, it is a, a two way traders market out there. Um, that's about the best summing that I can do with regard to the uh, indices that uh, that are in place right now. So hopefully that uh, helps uh, anybody out with regard to just an overview of the uh, market. A quick look at uh, where we at on that New York Stock Exchange Advanced Client Oscillator, which has been oscillating back and forth above and below zero. So it's not giving us the greatest of signals, uh, but we are above it again as we speak. So that's very interesting. Now, the reason I went to it is because we've been oscillating back and forth. On Friday, as an example, no, I, I think on Thursday, we closed above the uh, zero threshold line. Now, it had been below zero up until that point in time. So it hadn't proven itself. You got that two-day rule, that two-bar rule um, that we'll call out there. And so it closed right back below yesterday. That was an indication, or on, on Friday, it closed right back below it. And that was an indication that um, uh, sellers never had always had control. But then yesterday, it closed just above the zero line. And if close above zero today, it says buyers are the ones in control of the general markets. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. C C C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, still a mixed uh, market out there. The Russell up 18, Tranny's up 33, the other indices to the downside. Let's go out to Philly and speak with uh, John. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, I'm doing very well. And uh, I'm going to give you a good travels, bon voyage uh, in advance. And, Thank you. Um, how fun that you and your uh, spouse get to go. And I'm just guessing. You're going to go on uh, not only to a fine restaurant in Egypt, but are you not going with Angelina Jolie and go do a little tune rating over there? <laughs> yes, that's exactly what we're doing. <laughs> You're so in tune. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, it's going to be great, though. Looking, for looking forward to seeing the pyramids, just seeing some history. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be great. Now, I'm going to try to do some shows. Um, uh, because of the time zone difference, uh, which is about seven and eight hours is my recollection for all the places that I'll be, the uh, 11 o'clock show will really be like before dinner. So, um, the, you know, as long as I don't have excursions in amount or what have you, or we're not drinking, I don't really drink during the day. Um, I should be able to come back and, and do a show unless I'm actually traveling because uh, we've got quite a few places that we're headed to. So hopefully I'll be able to uh, do a number of shows as well and report, uh, you know, what I'm seeing from uh, different places, which are Egypt, Greece, and uh, Italy, and a number of different spots in Italy. But I know you called to speak about soybeans, and so why don't we uh, why don't we move over to that? I think you want to take a look at both the July and the November contracts. Is that correct? Uh, incorrect. Uh, okay. What I'd like to do is have you pull up five years of weekly charts on the spot soybeans. And I repeat, yes, right at the time being, July contract is the spot contract, but I don't care about uh, July going back six months. If yep. that spot uh, nearest future is going back five years, that's of interest to me. So to do that, what I've got to do, John, is go to the continuous contract for my data. 
So, um, and I don't have this stitched together. So let's first see and what I Steve, can. Let you know, yeah, let me just interrupt and, um, uh, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but what I did do in the Tiger's Den on Discord, I did post uh, five years of the uh, weekly uh, spot charts. Uh, so uh, any people that are in the den can go and look at that if they if they care to follow along. Uh, okay. And okay. Um, so you know what? Um, let me think. I'm looking on Tiger TV at your chart, and, you know, that looks pretty close to accurate. Okay. Uh, I know you've said it's stitched together, but uh, I think that's – that's quite yeah. close. So, okay, uh, good, so good, good, we can good. go with that. And perfect, perfect. Uh, for purposes of discussion, use your indicators. Okay. Well, for this here, the only indicator that I would have here, now this is a weekly time frame chart because uh, we're on the black background. So it doesn't have my notations, which we'll, I'll switch over to the current November contract. I just can't go back this far. But right now, what we can see out here is we can see the potential of an A to B equals CD to the downside. We take a look at this weekly chart. So we'd start with the A point being the high from June 6th, the B point being the low from the week of October 3rd, 2022. And then it looks like it might be the uh, February 13, 2023 level. So we are below the 1350 area. And the one to one A to B equals CD price projection would take us down to the 1125-ish area. Really what it does, it takes us back towards those lows in November of 2021 that I see out here. I also see that price is trading below the uh, weekly profile. So that is not uh, really an ideal situation. Um, it's trading below a monthly profile as well, I would guess, but with inside the uh, daily. But still just stay sticking back to the weekly chart. And we pull this back, like you said, you wanted to go back, you know, five plus years or so. And we can see that this did make a double top, uh, which basically was taking us back to 2012. So that's a 10-year uh, type of a uh, scenario back there, or, you know, approximately. I don't know what the actual price was on the, con the futures contract back in September of 2012, but it's somewhere in that vicinity. What 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 additional information or what are you seeing? What what were you looking for specifically before we switch over to the white background charts? Uh, very good, Steve. Thanks on that. Uh, just let me share. I thought this would be helpful to uh, expand on uh, what I'm doing, what I'm seeing as potential. OK. Um, um, what I will tell you right right now, this time of year, looking at spot charts gets very confusing. Here's why. Um, we're, uh, we can trade intraday or intraweek uh, July soybeans, which are currently, you know, over $13. And uh, we can also trade November soybeans, which are under 12. Big price difference. Now, remember, uh, that spot contract is, um, is the soybeans that were grown last year that they're sitting, you know, sitting somewhere in silos or what have you. And um, the November contract is the futures contract for the new crop, which will be planted, actually it's planted, being planted now and harvested in October, uh, you know, the October, November timeframe. And the price of that commodity is very much dictated by what the amount of soybeans left in storage is guessed to be uh, at the end of the marketing year. So, for example, those November beans that are just in the fields now at the start of the growing season, that price under 12 is a function of what traders are guessing the amount of soybeans will be left in storage Labor Day 2024. Uh, and the July contract over 13 today is in effect traders guesses as how much, uh, how many soybeans are left in storage Labor Day 2023, you know, three months time. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Uh, trading those two, yes, they're both called soybeans, but they're entirely different. They have nothing, you know, they may have nothing to do with one another being a function of how many soybeans are guessed to be in storage, Labor Day 23, Labor Day 24. Uh, I thought that would be helpful. Now, 
uh, in looking at that weekly chart, I observed the following. The major soybean bull market, 2020 to mm-hmm. 2022, you know, that went from $8 to 17 and a half. Mm-hmm. And the FIB 618 of that mark is uh, $11.60. And as I look at this decline in soybeans, and I don't care about July whatsoever now. Sure, I'm sure. thinking about those Novembers, and I'm saying, gosh, that November contract, that's come down and last Friday made a low at eleven seventy two, very close to that Fib six one eight support mark. Uh, so I'm thinking, gosh, this November contract, uh, which is just as I say, a guess of the future crop size and how much will be left in storage given demand, and we're talking fifteen months into the future. Um, that's where the price is today based upon those guesses. Well, now that we're down there close to that weekly FIB 618. Hey, John, hold I'm that thought. Just myself. hold that thought. Hold, hold that thought if you would. We're going to go to a break. We'll come right back to John and Philly in just a few. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We're on the line with John in Philly. We're taking a look at soybeans, and John's done a, a tremendous amount of work and was looking at the weekly charts has identified that it's possible that uh, soybeans, uh, November soybeans, have pulled back to a support level, a Fibonacci support level. And, John, what I can add to that, if you're looking for a signal, let's say, from a daily time frame to come into a trade, yesterday was both a confirmed TD9 count and Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern. You can see that on your screen right now. It was a bar following bar number nine. It was a nice big old uh, bull sash candle that had formed. There's a bull bullish structured profile that is in place. Now what you and I can see is that that oscillator and change line has acted as stiff resistance. So it's really a close above uh, that 1198 to 83-ish type area. Uh, but it's really the 12, 12, uh, 50 range that you're looking for. If price does close below that, it would suggest a change in trend. So you've got the daily bottoming pattern out there that's in place. So now knowing that, how does that impact your thought process? I wanted to be able to share that with you, uh, you know, so we could kind of understand your thought process with regard to any action that you might take. Steve, that's terrific. Uh, that November beans daily chart with the bar after bar nine on the TD9 count, you just got to love that. And the fact I that do. that is totally. occurring right right in a price level, um, yeah. of course, we have no bottom uh, right. proven. Uh, it's only a candidate for a bottom at this point in time. Absolutely. Uh, the, the future trend of this November soybean contract uh, at the, well, clearly money flows and sentiment shifts will impact where it goes. But in the larger scheme of things, uh, growing weather now through, um, you know, mid-August will dictate that. Uh, whether sure. it's excellent, average, or adverse weather will uh, dictate whether it uh, uh, bounces or rallies strongly or declines further, of course, all of which are possible. What I can say is, um, given this added info from you, I like this idea of having bought under 1180 as an attempt for a core long position. And uh, what I can merely say is if adverse weather unfolds the next 90 days, um, I won't be surprised if this is a bottom against that 1160 fib 618 on the weekly charts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and um, uh, what I could just say, this is no forecast whatsoever. However, yeah. if uh, uh, this bottom holds in this area, if adverse weather unfolds, I won't be uh, surprised or I could easily understand how a rally of 20 to 30 percent in this contract could unfold. Uh, but as I say, that is all very much dependent upon Mother Nature, and uh, sure. she's not telling me what she's going to do. I hear you. I hear you. Well, I would say on the weekly basis, to the extent that you continue to follow that, at least at this moment in time, for November, where a counter trend rally would end would be at the $13 level, 1309 to be specific. You got time before that's going to take place, I would think. But uh, that's what that's what you'd be looking for. But you got what you you know, you a great work, great analysis, John. Thanks for sharing that with us, especially on the weekly. And now you've got the daily signal out there. So uh, keep us posted, if you will. Thanks a bunch, Steve. You have a nice trip. You bet. That was John in uh, Philly. Let's get to some of the other questions that have come in. There was one from yesterday that we didn't get to, which was uh, Blackstone. BX was the uh, ticker symbol. I apologize. I don't remember who asked. It doesn't really matter out here. What I can share with you about Blackstone is right now it's trading above yesterday's high. It's trading above um, a uh, red oscillator and change line. Odds favor that it's making its way up to the bottom of its daily profile. And that's at 88.63. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, you just got a consolidation with inside profiles. And 92.94 is a real strong resistance level. And then on the monthly, it's 95.56 to 100.41 out there. I apologize again. I don't remember what the specific question was. But uh, this is what uh, uh, ticker symbol BX Blackstone is looking to do. Ray in Sarasota wants to take a look at Nordic American.
American tankers out here. I've got uh, so many requests out here. I'm not going to actually just go to the specific question. Just do a review, and hopefully that review is going to answer what you're looking for. It did have this nice TD9 count bottom pattern out here. And then uh, what it did yesterday was it negated a TD9 count top. That top formed of the bar following bar number nine. What it did was it gapped up and ran right into resistance at the TD9 count breakdown level. That's where price is broken down at 411. That can often be a resistance point, and that's what we have today. I don't see anything bearish about that. It's just getting up to a normal level of resistance where sellers would be located. That's what you're seeing right now. I don't see any kind of a uh, top. If you did get a bearish reversal candle today, though, you would get a Gartley sell pattern. But that is not the candle that you have at the moment. You are above the center of its bullish structured weekly profile. So, Ray, if you can get two consecutive closes above 393 on a weekly basis, 465 is in the cards. A price has found support at its monthly oscillator and change line. Basically, after forming a TD9 count top there, uh, it's traded above the top of its uh, profile. So that looks uh, neutral. Not just bearish, but or it really it's a neutral signal. So neutral on the monthly, uh, bullish on the uh, weekly, bullish on the uh, daily time frame. Ray, I hope that helps you out. I know you also wanted to look, take a look at ticker symbol ET. So let's get this up here. I think that's energy transfers, if I'm not mistaken. Doesn't really matter what it w is because we're uh, agnostic to the uh, symbol that we're looking at. Uh, with the same analysis that uh, John and I would do on a chart, take a look at soybeans. Same thing we'd do for energy transfer or any instrument in any time frame. That's the cool thing about this system. It works the same. So here with regard to ET, you're trading with inside the profile. You're above a green oscillator and change line. Uh, it is going to go target 1302. 1302 is the top of that profile. I suggest that it's going to do that, and I have that kind of conviction because when I look at the weekly chart, price above a weekly green oscillator and change line. That says higher price out there, and you're above the top of a profile on a monthly basis. So that too. So ET energy transfers should continue to move higher out there. I don't see anything stopping it other than sellers that are sitting at 1302. So Ray, I hope that helps you out with both ET and Nordic American tankers. Okay, we got the, the soybeans, so we're done there. Uh, we had a request to take a look at the TD9 counts on the weekly time frame chart. I guess I'm kind of cruising through these faster than, uh, than, than normal. But let's take a look at the uh, indices here for the weekly time frame. The question specifically was, what are the TD9 counts on the NDX100 and the S&P 5? So for the NDX100, I'll just simply expand out the chart out here. You're going to see that we completed a TD9 count top last week. Now, what that says to us is that if there's a close above last week's high, last week's high in the cash indice is 13.874.42. If we close above that, we have a strong upward momentum move. But that strong upward momentum move would be met with sellers at 14.277.20, just to be exact out there. We are in wave number seven as well, a very small portion of the Chapman wave. You can see it's letter G out here. Now, in order to form that top, you have to have a lower high. So that is um, still in place out here. We have had a higher high, but making a higher high does not negate the TD9 count. It's the close that would be important. So you've got a TD9 count top on the weekly basis. With regard to the cash indices, it's only the NDX and the NASDAQ composite that have those patterns. So let me give you the NASDAQ composite number to be watching as well. Now, this has come Friday, and that is if there's a close above 12, 731.73, it'll negate that signal. And that'll be suggesting to you and I that price would then go target 13, 7, 10, 70. That's its CD9 count breakdown resistance level. The answer for you in the S&P 500 is last week was only bar number one. There are no other weekly TD9 count patterns that are of really any kind of interest or concern at this stage other than the NDX and the NASDAQ composite. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome by, uh, back up, folks. Let's uh, continue on with our requests out here. Dennis inside the Tiger Stand was interested in Google. He's interested in Google from a short-term standpoint. So from a short-term standpoint, Dennis, we, we focus on the daily time frame right now. And the reason is because it has a valid TD9 count top. So that TD9 count top formed on uh, May 19th out there. And that suggests that short-term price should pull back to its oscillator and change line. 121.25 is the current print. If price uh, closes below the oscillator and change line, it will tell us that its momentum is waning and that price would likely then target 118.80, the top of the daily profile. If price were to get below that, we'd be looking at a range of 114.57 to 115.98. The weekly chart shows a uh, A to B equals CD pattern. Now, it hasn't quite made the extension, but if we did get a bearish reversal, candle this week that too could form a sell the D point pattern the monthly chart looks very strong it suggests that it wants to make a move to 152 10 out there so watch the daily watch the daily um, uh, for your signals out there because you've got the top and uh, chances are the price will pull back to test that 121 25 level so I hope that helps you out Dennis thanks so much for taking the time to write in uh, Mike writes in and says, ask the question, is natural gas bottom? So if we take a look at natural gas out here, we'll take a look at this daily time frame. That's this chart on the left-hand side. Forms a TD9 count bottom, forms a TD9 count top. In the process of doing that, a new profile formed yesterday. That new profile is above the prior profile. The bottom is above the prior bottom, the center is above the prior center, the top is above the prior top. Tells us about a change in trend to the upside out there. 270 is a pretty strong resistance level. That's a TD9 count breakdown level. And price is pulling back. And right now it's testing the center of that bearish structure daily profile. So if price can hold 251, the answer to your question, Mike, would be yes, this would be a bottom. If you take a look at the weekly time frame chart, you've got a nice TD9 count bottom that has formed here. And now we have price above that oscillator and change line, telling us about a 
potential change in trend. And on a monthly basis, you got to love it. Price pulled all the way back to a breakout level. It went through the first one at 309. That tells you to go to the next one. Well, it did that $2.38 out there. So is it a buy right now? Is it the bottom? It has the potential for that. If we look at the 30 minute time frame chart out here, what I don't have is some kind of a bottoming pattern. So with that being out there, Mike, it's going to be very difficult for me to say with conviction that, in fact, yes, natural gas has bottomed. Uh, if it has not bottomed, the price should do is go target the 245 level. That is that uh, red oscillator unchanged line. So I hope that helps to answer your question. Is it a bottom? It's got that potential. We just don't have that confirmation on the intraday charts, and it just says a cautious bottom. Dan inside the Tigers Den wanted to take a look at ARQQ out here. And I believe that is that one of Kathy Wood's uh, – maybe here's the ARK. But ARQQ could be. I don't know. But it is the Arcit Quantum fund out there trading out at a dollar fourteen, And it's back inside its daily profile. Let's just pull this back just a tad out here. And so we can see that um, – the top of the daily profile is at a dollar fourteen. We're trading at a buck eleven right now. It's not really trading at a buck fourteen, but if price can close, Dan, above a buck fourteen for two consecutive sessions, that would be a positive. And then your next round of resistance would be the TD nine count breakdown resistance level at a buck forty three. On a weekly basis, ARQQ is attempting to form a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Now it too is dealing with profile resistance. That's at a buck twenty eight, even Steven. If you can get a close above that, that would be a bullish signal and suggest a move up to 199. Nothing on the monthly time frame. Uh, we've had two consecutive moves higher on the daily time frame. Uh, this could be number three. This would suggest to you and I that we should see some type of pullback or retracement that begins after today or after tomorrow. That would be the typical dance pattern steps for ARQQ out there. But do you have a bottom on the daily? You absolutely do. It's a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. And you might have that same thing on the weekly. It's just too early to call because it is only Tuesday morning. So I hope that that provided you with the information that you were looking for as well. Let's go to the next request. Request That's from Jambalaya. And Jambalaya wants to take a look at butterfly. Now, I don't know if it's butterfly, but it's B-F-L-Y. That's what I would call it is the uh, butterfly. I've got butterflies in my stomach right now. Just kidding you. But it's trading at 220, 233, right? It is butterfly network. You got to love it. So again, I don't recall the request out here, but what I can share with you is where is this headed to? Well, because we're trading above the top of its daily profile that's at 223 if it does close above that today the butterfly wants to make a move to 262 and 262 would be the td9 count breakdown resistance level but before price can get up there what it's going to have to deal with jambalaya is 257 and 257 is the top of that weekly profile and what you and i can see is this basically has been trading in a sideways uh, direction with inside that bullish structured profile that ranges from a buck 72 at the bottom and 257 at the top so if you get above 257 and not just get above it but close above it then we're likely to get to that 262 level bullish on the daily looking bullish on the uh, weekly and on the monthly time frame chart, not a whole lot of help there with regard to the butterfly. On a daily time frame, this is going to be bar number two of consecutive moves to the upside. You typically don't get more than three or four. So that says short term top should be in the picture here after tomorrow's move. It could be a two bar move, but I'd say after tomorrow's move, looks like this will wants to continue to move higher. So I do hope that that on a 30 minute basis, I do not have any kind of a topping signal. So I do hope. Uh, jambalaya that uh, that assisted you with whatever the question was if you're anybody's looking for buy points on daily time frame charts and we take a look at them the pullback levels you'd be looking at so for example on butterfly here now would have to be the top of the profile it doesn't have to be but that would be level number one another level would be 211 and the final level would be that red oscillator and change line currently at 202 but i would say that would more likely be at 199 or less than that so that's what we've got we take a look at the butterfly out there let's get to the next round of requests gfai gfai that's coming from a guppy inside the tiger's den so let's pull that up see what that is 
see what it's doing, see what it's trading at. So GFAI is uh, Guard Force AI Inc. Uh, and it is traded above the top of its daily profile. Now, you don't see that right now because it's loading, but you will momentarily. But what it's dealing with here, McGuppy, is that oscillator and change line. So you've got a TD9 count bottom. That took place on that gap to the downside. It actually saw, shows us just how strong that pattern is. Uh, but what you really need to get in order for this to get any kind of traction, the upside is going to be a close above that red oscillator and change line. Tested rejected yesterday. Tested so far today. That number is up at 635. So if you get it close above 635, you're likely headed to the next resistance point, which, by the way, would come from the weekly, and that would be at um, 712. That's the bottom of its weekly profile. If we can get back inside there, we means close above 712. Then we'd be looking to run to 1705 over time out there. That's what I see when I take a look at the stock charts here for Guard Force AI. So, McGuppy, I do hope that that helps you out. Next question coming in from Alton, and Alton wanted to take a look at the 10-year uh, uh, interest rate out here. So let's switch panels, go to the black background charts. I can't pull that up for some reason on my white background chart. Sorry about that. I thought I had that fixed. I know I had that fixed. I ran into some real technical issues yesterday. That spent most of the day. But let's take a look at um, TNX out here. So let me pull that up. We'll get to our 10-year interest rate. Uh, right now, that is at 3.742 out here. So you're trying to get some type of guide as to what interest rates are doing. So the first thing that I would say is if we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, we have a good old-fashioned consolidation. That's at the low support, $3.33, well, 3.33%, I should say. And up at the top, it's 3.756. we come back to this break, we'll finish taking a look at the 10-year rate for Alton. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Hey, what you got on the screen here right now is the Egyptian pound. And uh, Stevie found a little window here. You can see that this thing has been cut in half uh, for the U.S. dollar. It used to be about 16 um, Egyptian pounds to a dollar. Now it's up at uh, 31. And the window that I found was actually flying um, first class to uh, Egypt, uh, paying in Egyptian um pounds out there and the price was uh, that the deal the deal's gone i think that delta wasn't really paying attention to what went on in a currency standpoint and the price was one third of what uh of what would have cost me the same what i would have paid had i not flown into cairo just it was flying coach um uh just to uh, just italy or something so the egyptian power if there's a if there's a great time to go to uh, egypt right now that is uh, most certainly the time out there but let me put this uh, chart back up here for the uh, tnx and what i was going to sh say out here alton is that if price is able to break through the top of this weekly profile again that's at 375 you should see a move up to that descending trend line so the extent that you uh, are, are paying attention to that draw in a trend line out there with regard to giving you any additional information i, I would if i could i just don't uh, have it. Let's get to the next question out here. Next question is coming in from Hector. Wants to take a look at uh, Exxon Mobil. Let me flip the uh, screens here so that I don't make this mistake. It's been pretty smooth today. Don't know why. But when we take a look at Exxon Mobil, it is trading above the top of its daily profile. And that is a, a beautiful thing out here. It should head up to 110.99. That's the center of its weekly profile out there. So that's what I see when we take a look at the charts for Exxon Mobil. We had a request to take a look at from Roger to take a look at Qualcomm. QCOM is the uh, ticker symbol here. It does have a roads momentum indicator bottom pattern uh, price has just been trading sideways um, boy not much else for me to share with you here no weekly bottom no monthly bottom uh, but you do have a daily bottom with a sideways consolidation sounds a lot like the market and the last instrument that was from I believe it was Vic who wanted to take a look at PayPal PayPal out here is running the resistance well it's trading above its red oscillator and change on a 62.75 if you can close above that what this suggests, Vic, is moving up to the 6504 level. 6444 is also going to be some sellers hanging out there. Folks, stay tuned. We've got great programming lined up. I'll be back with you on wonderful Wednesday. Please have a terrific Tuesday. Be safe out there. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow.